My name is Axel Klausmeier. I'm the director of the Berlin Wall Foundation. So the main topic is, um, well, in general, I would say human rights. And it's about the, the Berlin Wall is about the violation of human rights. But uh, in general, our foundation is responsible for looking after two memorials. The first one is the Berlin Wall Memorial here in Bernauer Straße. The other one is the uh, Marine, for, uh, the commemoration site at the former Marienfelder refugee camp. And our main task is to, uh, well, to protect and to maintain the sites, but also to research the history, to educate people. Education and political education is the key topic, as well as to provide um, um, to provide um, an adequate memory for the victims of communist dictatorship. Mm -hmm. Well, we are of course professionals in history and our uh, special skill and knowledge and uh, is the past and is the history of the past but I'm convinced that uh, the knowledge and uh, of the past is only uh, meaningful if we build bridges into the present. So um, we are often consulted to uh, explain about historic developments and historic uh, um, uh, ideas uh, in connection with, with developments of uh, uh, today. So, um, and our especially in our educational program, we of course teach about the past, yes, but it's important because uh, are the, for example, the very many young people that come here uh, ask questions about uh, the present with a with an, uh, present um, uh, concern. And in that respect, we have to build bridges between the past and the present because the approach is present. And uh, if we want to reach the present, generation, we have to uh, bring in our knowledge of the past for uh, current problems. Well, the overall uh, narrative is of course uh, uh, and is based on our uh, on, on democracy and freedom that is for sure but I'm uh, the um, the developments during the last 27 years by now uh, have changed and uh, I'm absolutely convinced that more and more people that the, there is only a, a small minority today in the former East that is not uh, sort of on this uh, sort of is not supporting this basis which means um, there is a of course a difference between former east and west in general but uh, now the uh, great great majority of people in the former east uh, and you can tell that from the elections of course do not support commun the communist ideas anymore uh, but are fully uh, um, convinced that uh, the Western uh, democracy, uh, ideas of democracy and freedom are the ones uh, to follow. And, the, um, and this has also something to do with the generation. I mean, uh, Germany is, I would say, far more uh, reunited than it was 20 years ago. So the development is proceeding and this has a lot to do with uh, the age of people, with the um, with experiences people make and of course uh, the experience of people uh, today uh, at the age of 70 in the former East in the former West are completely different. Um, the European Union I fear is facing serious problems um, and uh, the um, topic and the, of new borders uh, in Europe is of course uh, a very very uh, current one and of course uh, in context with our institution the Berlin Wall Foundation we are very often uh, questioned and asked uh, are we today since new borders are being built in Europe are we now losing the achievements 
of 1989, when for the first time ever there was a peaceful revolution, a communist dictatorship was peacefully overcome, walls were overcome peacefully, and now we now uh, sort of losing this achievement uh, due to and is this newly this newly created Europe that was created uh, as a consequence of the fall of the wall are we now losing it? But um, I believe that uh, we the, uh, the the vast majority of uh, European countries treasure the value of freedom and. Uh, uh, this will unite Europe in the future, I hope. And how, how memorials or memory can help to this? Uh, Is it necessary to have a European common political memory or how do you feel? I, I think every country has to have its own uh, 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 way of approaching memory, of dealing with memory because the history, the, the, the Memories are diverse, as Europe is. It's very different in Spain uh, to Poland. It's very different between Italy and uh, countries in Scandinavia or Germany. It's very different to the former Eastern Bloc. Um, Spain has a very difficult past as well. We are talking about uh, Franco, for example. Uh, how is Spain dealing with this history? How is Italy dealing with Mussolini? How is Germany dealing with two dictatorships? So it has to be an individual dealing with the past, I'm convinced. But if the general European basis is uh, uh, the Western uh, ideas and values of freedom and democracy, I think is only right that uh, there are different approaches because, for example, uh, if you think of a uh, rather uh, uh, sort of economic-wise poorer country of the European Union like Romania or Bulgaria, it, it has to be different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, about the visitors. Uh, this, 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 you believe more in this new concept, or not new, but because it's a concept of uh, tourism of memory, memory tourism or dark tourism. How do you feel with that? And how many people are you visiting here? Or because it's an open space, so it's a city yeah. space. Well, tourism is uh, extremely important to convey our information, to convey our messages, our values, and. Uh, I can say that Berlin, in particular, benefits very much from mass tourism. We have we uh, Berlin is the uh, the city that has in Europe that is I think third on the list, following Paris and London or London and Paris, and uh, we have an enormous amount of visitors here in Bernauer Straße. We have nearly one million visitors dealing with this difficult past. Uh, we are dealing with the values of freedom. And uh, we have so many visitors that we, on an ordinary basis, would not reach with an ordinary monument. So it's important to have it open, to address uh, different target groups. And um, I'm, I'm glad to say that uh, we are rather successful with it. It's, uh, we need open space, a public space in the middle of a city to confront people, even with history. With, in our case, we are happy that it's a happy end in our history. I mean, the wall falls, and even peacefully, not a single shot fired. This is a wonderful message, and uh, that goes and spreads out from Berlin, spreads out from Germany. Um, but we have to put it in an international dimension because that was only possible because international circumstances were right. And uh, therefore international uh, tourists come here to, um, to see that, to learn. And in that respect, the Berlin Wall commemoration site is also a symbol of hope for the rest of the world. It's people come here, yes, it was possible. Why not in our country where there are still walls or where new walls are going up? So I'm very optimistic and uh, but extremely positive that um, 
uh, well, public spaces uh, that are dedicated to commemoration aspects are extremely important in every city of the world. Combining also relics with uh, art processes. Yeah, we, you have to have a, a multifaceted approach. You cannot rely on just one target group. You need different approaches to reach different people. You need the authentic side. You need uh, the uh, remnants and traces of the authentic. But that's why we travel somewhere. Otherwise, uh, uh, the digital version is not any better. It's mm -hmm. worse. We want the authentic experience. That is why we travel. And uh, if we, but still, if we connect it with other approaches, artistic approaches, for example, it's uh, it's uh, only fair. But it has to do uh, justice, uh, and it, the site has to be dominated by the authentic fabric. Mm 